So, good morning. Happy Sunday. What do we got here? September 25th. Uh, we did go yesterday. We tried to take uh, that 100 acres of canola off. It wasn't ready yet, but I took a load off anyways to dry because we had uh, we had that issue where uh, when they finished up before, uh, they went around the outside round. It wasn't quite ready. We foolishly left it in the combine hopper. And then after about five days, we unloaded it and around the bubble up auger, it was starting to get a bit sticky. So we had that 180 bushels to dry anyway. So we just went out, we took another 300 and some off, just enough to fill the dryer, uh, brought it back to fill the dryer. Right now we got the crew working diligently here, pounding uh, bolts into the deck. So we thought Sunday, it was kind of gloomy this morning, although the clouds are gone now. So we may as well finish off the deck. So, uh, we didn't do a whole bunch of YouTubing last week. I, uh, I sprayed about four or 500 acres of of ground that had the crops been off of it already and there was a lot of new growth. So uh, hopefully that was a good, good efficient use of glyphosate. Um, we were making a bunch of feed and uh, so on and so forth. So really not too much, not too much exciting footage, I guess. We were also in the greenhouse, uh, Buddy, myself, and my dad. We cut back a bunch of the tomato plants because, I mean, it's time for them to stop growing, right? So it's time to get them all cut back so the tomatoes that are there will turn red. Uh, Corey and my mom, they did the garden. They pulled all the tomatoes and all of the above ground produce out of there. There's still spuds and stuff like that in there, carrots. Um, and then other than that, it's been... Uh, you know, Corey's been working away at painting the house. I should actually do a, I could, it's probably getting to the point where I could do a walkthrough there now. Um, we put the slide on the deck, finished putting the railing on the deck. We didn't go with that, um, never, what, did, what do they call that? Like never, never again decking or whatever, where it's all composite. Um, number one reason, this deck probably would have cost like forty, forty-five thousand dollars if we would have went with all that material and had it built. Uh, the way it sits now, we're probably I don't know ten or something into it. So, and we like the look of this railing, anyways. This is exactly the same railing that we put on the trailer when we did that one, and uh, so it's going to be on this side, and it's going to go around the little uh, little deck on the front as well. Sunflowers up there. I don't know how to exactly tell when sunflowers are ready to be combined, but they seem to be doing their thing. Like, I, I don't think they froze yet, although we had one day where it was about minus three for, for a few minutes here. Um, so if that got them or not, I don't know. It doesn't look like it. I think they're actually just going through their cycle where they're, you know, they planted, they grew, they matured, which would be really rare in our area because I think they're like 140 days and we only get like 100 and 110 days on the average of growing weather so that's been that this sunday video is probably going to be just uh yeah it's just, it's just a recap of, of the few few things we were doing so um arguably one of the best things about having children is um they can get into these spots that you don't want to bend down and lay on your belly and put the uh put the nuts on the bolts so that's uh, definitely a good job for them. Just doing the old uh, farm kid drop off here. So you uh, you whip around. Grandma catches them at the bottom of the step. And, uh, and you go out of life. So the kids do love running around for sure. That's, they love riding, but Buddy's not feeling so well. Emmy's just getting over her uh, cold as well. And uh, well, it's just not always the best to have them cramped in the combine cab all day, but uh, things are looking good here. So we got Carl parked out here, uh, both combines. Like I said earlier, this piece is only 110 acres. I've already got, according to my GPS, I've already got 26 of them done and uh, probably more than that. But uh, we got uh, one single axle load right full off of here already. Uh, best case scenario we get the super bees right full and uh, and then we'll be done that'll be uh, basically a wrap for our harvest 2022 well good afternoon closing in on three o'clock here about 10 to 3 we uh, we've been at the combining here for about half an hour now with both machines I came out a little earlier with the 9610 grabbed a sample 
Went back, tested it, it was around 7, 8. So that's perfect for us. We're gonna, uh, we're going to uh, combine for a little bit. We only have um, maybe, I don't know, 80 acres or something here left. So it's been, uh, Corey brought the other combine out. It was too tough yesterday, it was about 11.5. I took a load off anyways to, and I just run it through the dryer. Um, and the load that I did take off was all the outside rounds and then all in behind these trees and stuff. And that's always the toughest part of the field. So it's good to get those off and get them in the dryer. And then you can, uh, then you can get a more representative sample of what the rest of the field is gonna be when you're just picking up the straight swaths. So as far as yield goes, it yielded actually pretty well for the first whatever I got done here. What do I got done here? This thing says I got 28 acres done, which is all right. Uh, for the first 28 acres, it yielded pretty well. I would say like maybe 25, 30. Um, I do know that as we move to the north, it's going to play right out. There's going to be spots where there's going to be almost zero. So originally when I was swapping this field and uh, when we were talking about it earlier in the year, uh, I. I thought this was actually going to be a write-off altogether because it came up so poorly and uh, I mean we even tossed around the ideas of maybe just working it up saving the fertilizer but we let it go uh, we did the research on it it didn't look like it was chemical carryover damage it didn't uh, I mean there was a lot of things it didn't look like so we just uh, we thought okay well we'll leave it we'll see how it goes and I'm kind of glad we did because it is making a crop I've got um, well, I got about a thousand bushels off of it already, and uh, we aren't done yet. So every bushel is a plus. This year yields weren't uh, they weren't the all-time highs. I know there were guys that did get good yields here and there uh, across our farm. I would say we were on the bottom end of our averages, except for the barley and the oats. They did they did very well, but uh, even at that, they were somewhere mid mid to high. Nothing nothing was really at the top end of what we've seen before for a bumper crop so um, that's the way farming is though it's always it's a game of averages and some years you do really 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 well and some years you do really 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 poor and then some years you just kind of you just kind of holy moly I look at that just a minute. look at those guys three big muley bucks that'll be the envy I wish my window wasn't so dirty it's not doing it justice So what you get too when you talk to farmers um there's like really three types of farmers i guess and there's the types that will drive right out to some of the best spots of their field and they'll combine those and then when people are saying well what did it run that's what they'll use oh i went 50 bushels then you'll get these miserable farmers who are miserable at about everything well they'll go up on some knoll or down in some drowned out spot they'll combine that and when they're at the coffee shop people say well what did it run that's what they'll tell you and then there's like the more centrist level-headed farmers that will tell you well we combined the whole hundred acres some was really good some was really bad it averaged out to be 25 bushels why that's uh i mean why i find that important is i'm young in agriculture so if you find somebody that will honestly tell you what the yield was in the good spot and what the yield was in the bad spot and what the average was you can make a lot more informed uh, decisions as you're going forward so if a guy tells you that uh, yeah like we got one quarter and it's the best land on our whole farm and we bought this new variety of canola seed and we planted it there and it was good growing season and it yielded 10 bushels to the acre well you know you don't want to buy that canola seed that's not a very good one for the area and uh you know if, if that uh that same person tells you you know basically the opposite scenario where yeah we bought this stuff and even in our worst in the worst land that we have it yielded good then uh, it might be something you want to look into when you get uh when you get that it's and it's not that it's it's wrong information or whatever and whatever but it's it's polluted information is what it is where people say yeah no it, it, you know it was no we got it we got a 50 bushel average when it was just 50 in the good spot and the rest was a total disaster you uh you don't want to be making decisions off of that 
which I find unfortunate across the egg sector because you do encounter that a lot. Even on uh, even on TikTok, I was laughing, and there's that song that says, uh, "Tell them anything you want to, just don't tell them all the truth." And uh, so people are making that TikTok. You know, when the neighbor asks, "What's the wheat testing?" You can tell them anything you want to, just don't tell them the truth. When they ask you what the canola is running, you tell them anything you want to, just don't tell them the truth. I find that insanely shitty. Um, and I mean, the, the guys that find that funny, I, I think they have a they have a mental problem. And uh, of course, you don't owe anybody anything, right? I'm not saying that, but I mean, you could being being so like I guess effectively lying isn't isn't really. I don't find it that fun. Um, so we're I'm very honest on YouTube. And the one thing I like about the social media, the YouTube and, and stuff like that, is there's a lot of farmers around on YouTube, certainly around like North America, a lot of farms, small farm channels, even some of the bigger farm channels that are that are right honest about what's going on. And uh, that really helps. It helps uh, helps being able to market grain more efficiently, more effectively, helps uh, in your machinery purchasing, which, which machines are good, which machines are bad. It helps with your uh, understanding where fertilizer prices are going and, and all of that stuff. So definitely uh, choose to surround myself with more honest people and uh, and be more honest with people. She took my spot. Just rude. So this this hundred acres, hundred and ten acres, whatever this is, it wasn't. Uh, it, it, you know, it looked shitty all growing season, and uh, I mean, we already got a single low, single axle load out of here. Plus, we got the the front part of these Super B trailers are full. Just moving into the back part, Super Bs when they're right full, field loaded, they hold about two thousand bushels of canola. That single axle held about five hundred. We got uh, five, six, uh, ten, I didn't even count them, rounds still at the north end of this field. And then we gotta come back, we gotta do in behind the trees, and we got another about 14, 15 acres back here. So actually, all in all, looking like it's gonna be pretty good. It might even, uh, yeah, it might even actually make 30. As strange as that would be, get to the sunflowers well just like that basically the 2022 harvest season on our farm is done and we do have that five acres of sunflowers and there's that little patch of oats around the uh, around the dago the oats aren't gonna make it we'll probably swath them see if somebody wants to silage them or bale them the sunflowers we are gonna combine um, that'll happen maybe in a week or so so uh, the, uh, you know, the bulk, like farming, like the real farm is, is done. The, the, it's just sunflowers left. So this yielded a lot better than I thought. I had to run home. I had to get that single axle. Um, that little piece that we just finished on, uh, she said her monitor went up to about 10, which is dry for canola, but we had a little bit left to dry anyway. So <clears throat> once we get these combines home, we got to, I mean, there's still lots of work to do, but if, uh, you know, effectively, harvest is done. So, to everybody that watched along this fall, I really do appreciate that. Uh, we're gonna try to have some cool stuff coming on this winter. I don't know, some shop projects and things like that. We'll see where we get to with all that. Um, should be moving into the new house in November here. So, uh, I'll do a walkthrough of that too. Um, hopefully, we'll put together a video of from uh, from start to finish of that. So if you're watching my videos and you haven't already subscribed, um, please go ahead and do that. Subscribe, like the videos, share the videos, 
leave some comments. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, if there's any questions you have, any content you want to see added, let me know. We can do that too. But uh, but for the rest of the evening, what is it? 6:30 here. I'm gonna get my machines home, stuck in the shed, and go in and have some supper. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.